Right, now there's absolutely nothing wrong with watching bad films. In a way, they actually improve the good ones by proximity, but there's a limit to what anyone can endure, just as there's absolutely no limit to what Hollywood will subject us to in the eternal hunt for sweet, sweet, coin, coin, dollar, dollar. That's why there's another Smurfs movie coming out. Also, because the final celebrity to be killed by 2016 was God and all his compassion. Even for cinephiles who watch hundreds of bad movies a year, there are some frustrating upcoming releases that already look unwatchable. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and there are 10 upcoming movies you couldn't make us watch with a gun to our heads. Number 10, the Willy Wonka prequel. Gene Wilder has only just died, you f monsters. But hey, that's the point. Like the studio rushing out a new Best of Prince CD, we're getting another one of those prequels that utterly ruins an important part of the mythology of the original. Wonka is supposed to be a mysterious figure, driven underground by his competitors. That's the foundation upon which his magic is built. Going back and picking that part is ruinous to his appeal. Also, Tim Burton has already f***ing done that with the whole dentist, subject, matter, plot, Thing in his movie. Hollywood needs to stop obsessing about anthology movies that present iconic characters as younger versions. It didn't work for Darth Vader, it didn't work for Wolverine, and it won't work for Wonka. Number 9, Sandy Wexler. This is the latest in Adam Sandler's awful sex for cash love affair with Netflix. This time he's playing a talent agent in the 90s with a list of interesting clients. God help us all. Putting aside the fact that Adam Sandler is solid brown assurance these days, his deal with Netflix has so far spunked out the ridiculous six. That's sh and the do-over also sh Expecting anything more from the third film in the deal is insanity, particularly as this looks like just another opportunity for Sandler to scrabble for a paycheck like a dying man trying to dig for water in the desert. Well, I'm gonna get a lot of fun comments from Adam Sandler fans, aren't I? Number 8, Smurfs, The Lost Village. Get f Smurfs. After two woeful films from the must-have cute things dancing to a modern pop song style of animated movie, the world saw a tiny glimmer of sanity when Smurfs 3 was cancelled. However, you can't keep a dead horse down, and a cluster of blue twats are back for Smurfs The Lost Village. And I don't care how much Mandy Patinkin you put in it, there are some things that don't need to exist, but hey, at least it's got Demi Lovato playing Smurfette, there's a candle of hope in the dark chasm of ball-squeezing despair. Also, who is Demi Lovato? Have I even said that right? Number 7, Fifty Shades Darker. Boobs, eh? How about them real-life lady tits? So Fifty Shades of Grey was exactly that, but it's part of a franchise that we've got two more of the f***ing bastards. The story for this one is a car crash, including Stacey wondering that Christian will defer to behaviour that literally defines him, the appearance of a professional rival, and a paedophile dominatrix who turned Christian. Also, it's probably going to be about as sexy as a wasp's nest. Number 6, Amityville The Awakening. The 17th, yes, that 17th film in the Amityville horror series sees a rare big screen outing for the franchise starring Bella Thorne, Jennifer Jason Leigh, and the kid who plays the Joker on Gotham. Look, haunted houses are fun, but another idiotic sequel where someone again accidentally moves into the most famous house in history is absolutely not. Amityville no longer deserves to be in cinemas. It deserves to be released on DVD to absolutely no fanfare. No amount of repeatedly peddling the same tat and pretending it's different will change that. Number five, My Little Pony the movie. Right. Okay, I 100% understand why they're making a My Little Pony movie. I can understand the appeal of the cartoon, even though I'm not a brony, and I am not a brony. I'm not a brony. But doesn't it sound just like the most uncomfortable watch in the world? Going to the cinema, kids to the left of me, 30-year-old men with plushies to the right, stuck in the middle with... sad. I'm not a brony. Number 4, Sonic the Hedgehog. Nothing spells impending disaster like coupling a video game adaptation with a live action CGI mix format, and that's precisely what 2018 Sonic adaptation is seeking to do. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. And I could die. The major problem here is that sometimes even the most narratively sound video games can't translate onto the big screen, and Sonic ain't that. It might have worked for an illumination animation or something, but the whole live action mix, it just makes us think of Yogi Bear, the Chipmunks, and Scooby Doo. And the only way they could save it is if they get John Goodman to play Dr. Robotnik. Then I will see it five times. Number three, The Nut Job 2. Remember that amazing original animation, The Nut Job? No? What do you mean? Come back. It was about squirrels. I don't know, it wasn't very good, but it made a bucket full of profit, so inevitably a sequel was optioned, pitting the animals against that long-standing enemy of Mother Nature, roguish developers who want to turn their home into an amusement park, which makes the fact that the animals are clearly enjoying a roller coaster on the poster all the more confusing. Anyway, this has diminished returns written all over it, and the original was already a bit bad, and it's clearly a new contender for the Ice Age Award for perfunctory cynical sequels. Number 2, Transformers The Last Night. I enjoyed the first Transformers movie, so I'm partially to blame for this. Since that point, Michael Bay has systematically set about making sequels with the entertainment half-life of what came before. We've now got to the point where the giant swinging testicles of a robo-monster and the racism twins are probably viewed fondly as some of the high points of the series. Luckily, the next one is about Optimus Prime being a Knight Templar. 
Also, Optimus Prime is a truck. Number one, Emoji Movie, express yourself. Ah, f That's it, folks. We finally got to the stage of culture where anything Anything that's even remotely heard of is appropriated by evil corporate Hollywood, intent on squeezing every drop of blood out of, oh, I recognize that. We've had Angry Birds, we're getting Tetris, and coming in 2017, we have a movie literally about the sprites you use to react to your friend's hilarious WhatsApp messages. Now, I know the Lego movie worked, I know it did, and by rights it shouldn't have worked, but f this. F it. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.